Servants of Allah, fear Allah as they should be feared. For all you who believe, fear Allah and keep your duty to Him. And let every person look to what He has sent forth for tomorrow. And fear Allah, verily Allah is all aware of what you do. And be not like those who forgot Allah, meaning became disobedient towards Allah. And He caused them to forget their own selves. Those are the wicked rebellion ones, servants of Allah. Indeed, the true deeds are the deeds done for the hereafter. And the ultimate happiness and the happiness gained for the year, on, on the hereafter. Servants of Allah, the ultimate happiness is the happiness of the hereafter. And he who gains aims for that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will also grant him the happiness of this world in life. For Allah the exalted says which means, Whoever does works of righteousness, whether male or female, while he is a believer, verily to him we will give a good life, meaning in this world in life. And we will reward him or pay them certainly a reward in great proportion, meaning in the hereafter. This word in life is nothing but a station or provision is provided, after which travel will be long. So whoever knows its consequences should be careful. And whoever is certain of the length of the road ahead indeed will be prepared. The ultimate and true happiness is indeed only place in obeying Allah, following the commands of Allah, fulfilling the orders of Allah, and keeping away from disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ultimate happiness is indeed found in fulfilling the matter of Tawheed and the matter of true obedience to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the happiness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these, these are the means to the happiness in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised will grant his servants. This is the home of the hereafter. We will place for those who seek no superiority in the land nor do they see corruption and the good end for the righteous ones. Servants of Allah, the means to gain happiness in this world of life, in the grave and in the hereafter. Our sight in the book of Allah, as well as the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For Allah the exalted has declared that the foundation of attaining happiness in both homes is through attesting to the oneness of Allah acting and protecting the matter of Tawheed within your heart and your actions and your statements. For Allah the Exalted says, Those who believe and have not harmed or touched their Iman with any form of oppression, meaning shirk. For those Allah will grant security, Allah will grant safety, and they are indeed guided. Shaykh al-Islam rahimahullah so believing in Allah and believing in the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the essence of gaining happiness and is indeed the foundation and the fundamental base of happiness. Quran and its recitation, acting upon it and following its meanings, is also the source of guidance and steadfastness and the source of happiness. For Allah the Exalted says, this is indeed a clear explanation to mankind and guidance and a warner and an advice to the righteous ones, and the prayer which is the post of the deen, and also the pillar of receiving the good of this life and the good of the hereafter. Allah said in deep prayers, forbid and keep the servant away from committing actions of immorality and sins. Fear in Allah, gather and stop the servant from disobeying Allah. For Allah said that's for he who fears the station of his Lord and forbids his soul from committing desires, Jannah will be his final abode. And joining good and forbidding evil is a great fundamental and a great pillar of the matter of the deen. And it is indeed a support for those who commit shortcomings. And it's an honor for those who command it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have set it upon male and female. And for the matter of enjoining good and forbidding evil, the status of the ummah have been elevated and raised. As Allah the Exalted says which means, you are among the best of nations ever taken out to mankind. Why? Because you enjoy good and forbid what is evil. And believe in Allah. Giving nasiha. Advising one another. It is indeed the essence also of the deen. For by that, the servant corrects he who is committing mistakes. And reminds he who has forgotten. And it becomes also an excuse for the servant. To stand before Allah that he has delivered his message. For the Prophet Sallallahu said, Religion is sincerity. Religion is sincerity. They said to all Messenger of Allah, they said to Allah, His book, His Messenger, and to the rulers of the Muslims and the common folks. And the deen of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is based upon morals and mannerism. 
And he who increases in mannerism, that is will, increases by the will of Allah and his deen. As the Prophet sallallahu said, the completest of the believers in Iman, those who are best in mannerism. Repentance is a form of happiness. Seeking Allah's forgiveness opens the door of hope and closes the door of sins. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala says, Indeed, repentance closes the doors of evil. And forgiveness, meaning seeking Allah's forgiveness, as well closes the gates of evil, meaning sins. Getting closer to the authentic scholars of the deen of Allah, those who call to the deen of Allah, based upon evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah, based upon the understanding of the Sahaba, sitting with them and being in their company, brings happiness to the soul. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it a reasons for the angels to mention your name before Allah and for the angels that test on your behalf before Allah when you sit in the gathers of knowledge where the scholars and authentic scholars of the deen of Allah deliver. Shabi rahimahullah ta'ala said, sit and be seated with the scholars. For if you do good, they will praise you. And if you commit bad, they will give you excuses. And if you commit mistakes and they advise you, they will not shun you. And if you show ignorance, they will teach you. And if they attest something, they will benefit you by. But those are only the authentic scholars. Not the ones who call to the hellfire. The ones that the Prophet wasallam said, callers by the gates of the fire, whoever answer them will throw them into it. How do we know them? They use their opinion rather than the Quran and the Sunnah. They explain the hadith and ayat based upon their desires, not based upon the explanation of the Sahaba of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They switch depending on the trend. In the case of the Muslims, what was halal yesterday, they could make it haram today because the community has asked for it. Or what was haram yesterday, they could make it halal today because also the community has asked for it. But the scholars of the deen of Allah, the authentic ones, their status is the same. Their deen does not alter. Their aqeedah remains firm. And the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to them will never change that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and hurts the skies and the earth. Servants of Allah pondering over the stories of the prophets and the messengers. Pondering over the stories of the companions and the righteous. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it a reason for the servant to find the path in which he has lost. When he looks over the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, nothing that is happening to the ummah today has never happened before. So therefore to look for the safe haven and the safety route, look at the ways in which was taken by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The way is taken by the prophets and the messengers before him and the Sahaba after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And you will find the way. You will find safety. This is the straight path. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also commanded Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to take. For Allah the Exalted says, had Allah. Those whom Allah has guided, the ones whom Allah has guided. So follow their guidance. And also their members of Allah. Brings tranquility to the horse, ease to the horse, and restfulness to one his body, and brings strength also to the body. For Allah the Exalted says, Only by the members of Allah will horse find tranquility. By constantly remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by reading Quran and making dua, and adhering to the members of Allah taught to us by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Reviving knowledge in our homes, knowledge of the deen of Allah. Allah said, the Prophet said, based upon the understanding of the Sahaba. This is the knowledge you are commanded to attain. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned, saying the house in which Allah is mentioned versus the house in which Allah is not mentioned. The deen of Allah is not taught. Sins are committed. The boundaries of Allah are crossed. Is the example of the living and the dead. Because those houses where Allah is mentioned, where the deen of Allah is practiced, surrounded by the angels. And the houses in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not mentioned. Music is blasting, TV is on. There are made the names of Allah Azza wa are not mentioned, meaning his remembers are not mentioned. The Quran is not recited, pictures are hung. These houses get filled up by the shayateen. And the angels do not enter them. Said so our Prophet Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hours being sound and being free from jealousy and hatred toward your fellow Muslim brothers and sisters is a reason for attaining happiness and for the gates of goodness to open upon you. 
Allah the Exalted says about his Khalil and his Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. salim. He came toward his Lord with a sound heart, a heart that is free from any disease, from any hatred or jealousy. Going toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pure and safe. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that soundness of the heart is a mean to push the body to perform righteous deeds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks in regards of the day of resurrection. On that day, neither wealth nor children will avail the servant. It would not benefit the servant except he who comes toward Allah with a sound heart. He came toward Allah with a sound heart. And that sound heart resulted in him doing good deeds. Resulted in him protecting the salah. Resulted in him reciting the book of Allah. And not having enough of reciting the words of Allah. Resulted in his tongue being what by their members of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Resulted in our women adhering to the hijab commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Commanded by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Followed by the female companions of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is a sound heart. A sound heart that follows when he hears قال Allah, قال Rasulullah. Allah said, the Prophet said, he says, سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا He does not mock it. He does not say, oh, those who are among those who say Allah said, the Prophet says. He hears the commands and he responds with obedience. He hears the order and he responds with سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا This is how Allah described the Prophet and the Sahaba. آمن الرسول بما أنزل إليه من ربه والمؤمنون كل آمن بالله وملائكته وكتبه ورسله لا نفرق بين أحد من رسله وقالوا سمعنا وأطعنا The messenger has believed in what has been revealed upon him and so the believers meaning the Sahaba each meaning and every one of them has believed in Allah his angels, his books, his messengers and they say we do not differentiate amongst any of his messengers and they say we hear and we obey to the commands of Allah the response of the Muslim men and women today is that we hear and we argue. We hear, but then we debate. We hear, we refuse. We hear, but we disobey. Halal earned money brings happiness to this dunya. And if it's accompanied with iman and righteous deeds, bring happiness in the akhirah. And it brings blessings to one's wealth. And it brings also corrections to one's office ring. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fixes the affairs of his children and his spouse, to the extent that other, one of the righteous predecessors says, Indeed, I know the halat, the earning of one of you by looking at his children. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects his children because he preserved the provision in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised him by gaining it from halal and spends it towards halal. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned that the dua of the servant would not be raised unless his earning is from halal. Besides other conditions set by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And if all the conditions are met and the earnings is from haram, then his dua will never be raised and answered. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentioned that the, preserv the preservation of one is wealth is protected also when he protects his wealth from extravagance and overspending or spending towards haram in general. Allah gives him money and he spends it towards means of disobedience.